Welcome back to Little Ian Rose. My name is Summer Noel, and today we are going to do a beautiful Arabian Nights themed tumbler. Uh, this is a really fun one to do. It uses holographic glitter. I'm going to be kind of throwing a bunch of techniques at you um, in one t tutorial, uh, but it kind of loops it together to be this absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful cup. Um, so what we're going to basically be using is a turner. This is the Little Ian Rose turner. Um, you don't need a lot of epoxy to start, but we have, we're going to be using, when we start coating this, we're going to be using the epoxy mixer. Um, but to start, we're going to be doing the hang method. Oh no, sorry. We're doing tacket method, um, using Elmer's craft bond to burnish down this beautiful holographic glitter. I've got my burnishing tool. You can see I've used it for, um, an alcohol ink project. So I'm going to change out the end to be a fresh uh, tip for this project. And then we have this wand. This is just, you, this is actually a PVC pipe with a piece of pool noodle on it. You can see I use it a lot. Um, <clears throat> this is how I spray painted. This cup has already been prepped and spray painted. Um, so this is how I spray paint my cups so I don't get spray paint all over my hands. So I gently sanded this cup. I took it outside and I did probably about three to four coats. This one um, has Krylon on it. Krylon, you need more coats than you gen generally need with Rust-Oleum. So keep that in mind while shopping. Um, I sent uh, one of my employees out and they brought back Krylon, which makes me crazy, but it does work just fine. But you just need extra coats of it because it doesn't get as good a coverage as the Rust-Oleum. And I apologize for my voice, you guys. Um, I'm basically constantly sick having triplets in my house. Uh, and they're just little germ monkeys <clears throat> come bringing home stuff from school. Um, so we are going to go ahead and set some of this stuff out of the way. And we'll get rocking and rolling. Here we go. Okay, so we have it set up on our little drying rack stand here. This is just a paper towel stand that I bought at the dollar store. It has a football on the top. Uh, it works great as a mount. It holds it really, really steady. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change out the tip of my burnishing tool, uh, get it ready for burnishing the glitter. I'm gonna go ahead and shake up and make sure that my cast adhesive spray is ready to go. Now this tacket method that everybody goes on and on about, you can do it with multiple different project products. Um, you guys saw me do it probably over a year ago um, with just epoxy. Um, just burnishing down the um, glitter is what you wanna do and bur by burnishing what that means is laying the glitter down flat. So you want to push all that glitter down flat, um, nice and flat. And that's what burnishing means. So tacket method is basically just burnishing down the glitter flat. Um, you saw me do it in the torch method where I put a layer of epoxy down. And like nine hours later, I go and gently, re I wear my chemical mask and gently reheat the um uh, epoxy and put the the uh, glitter down on top and then use the silicone brush to brush it over the top which lays it down perfectly flat and gives you that beautiful burnish that is another way of doing this um, but you guys seem to like the fast method so I'm going to show you this method in this round um, as opposed to that so what I'm doing just off camera here is I've got a trash can I normally would do this outside but it is pollen season right now and it, it, if I take this outside and put this adhesive, 90,000 pieces of this beautiful pollen, it's beautiful in the air. It looks like it's snowing, uh, but it, dr it drives me crazy as a crafter because it sticks to everything and I can't have my workshop open. So I have a little dust mask on and I'm just going to be doing this over the top of a trash can and doing a very gentle spray of the spray adhesive down around the cup. And I rotate the cup as I go. So you can see that there's just a very gentle layer of epoxy i mean of uh, the spray adhesive all the way around and i'm going to rotate around it twice to make sure the entire thing is coated so you can see it's now slightly shiny and we're going to let it sit for just a minute if you start too early it's too tacky and wet um and it's kind of just like doing the epoxy method so we are going to let it sit and just let some air get on it, start letting it get more tacky as opposed to just wet like glue. And then we're gonna drop our, um, uh, <clears throat> Vader is the color that we're gonna be using from our line. Little Lean Rose is a glitter company um, and Vader is our ho holographic black. Uh, you know, taking the holographic to the dark side. <clears throat> so we just let this sit for, you can see just a few seconds. And then we are gonna drop them all over there. Perfect. You can see it's just starting to get tacky as opposed to, to wet. And we are going to start dropping Vader right down on that glue. Now, I really, Elmer's Craft Bond is what we're using, the spray adhesive. 
Um, I prefer this uh, to Super 77 because Super 77 is repositional. Um, if you, Elmer's Craft Bond does eventually get more firm, which is kind of why I like it better. It works a little bit better for this particular um, style of uh, applying your glitter. Um, Super 77 is the other one you guys see me use a lot, um, but it is more permanent adhesive. I mean, sorry, it's more repositional adhesive, and this one has a permanent bond if you let it go over time. So it gets this one gets the right amount of tackiness. I feel like Super 77 stays a little bit too liquidy and doesn't do the tacket as well. So we're just making sure we coat every part of this surface. See, and there's one of those fuzz balls that made it in. The little piece of uh, adhesive. I'm uh, not, uh, sorry, the pollen. All right, so we're just gonna, we've got all the extra glitter. We're gonna put, make sure it's all on all the edges, up top to the bottom. And then we're gonna tap, turn and tap. There we go. So we've got Vader now on there. I love these foldable parchment papers. I get these at the grocery store in the baking aisle. They're already pre-folded. It makes it really, really easy for collecting your glitter. Shake it off to the side. Okay, so now we're gonna take our burnishing tool and this is where we're gonna put you on high speed, but basically we're just gonna go and basically tap down all this glitter and make it nice and flat. So you, what I'm just basically doing is tapping. You can see barely any sticks to the, the, the um, burnishing tool. And we just tap. I'm holding the, the arm of the uh, drying rack and I'm just tap, 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 tapping. And that's gonna give you that beautiful holographic rainbow. Um, laying this glitter down flat is what does that. So you guys kind of see the basics and here we go. We're gonna put you on speed. speed. All right, can you guys see that beautiful holographic rainbow? That is what you get when you use the burnishing tool and lay that glitter down nice and flat on the surface. And it is beautiful. And you can get this using the tacket method. Like I said, you could just use epoxy. You can jump back up on my channel, guys, and go back about 40, 40 tutorials ago and you will see the t uh, tutorial that I do on Tacket Method. And it gives you the same beautiful rainbow in your holographic. All right, guys, we are back. So when you work with the Elmer's Craft Bond, you only have to let it sit for about an hour and then it's permanent um, and it's done its thing. So then what you do is do a matte finish uh, clear spray. I use Rust-Oleum Matte Finish Enamel. Uh, and so that's why it's kind of lost its sheen but that will come right back when we put epoxy on top. Now, I've already got my PPE gear on, I've got my chemical mask on, I've got my nitrile gloves on. I'm ready to work with this. We've got our epoxy mixing in the Little and Rose epoxy mixer. Um, this thing is awesome, if you have not seen this. Um, we use, I, use, I developed this and designed this, uh, and it is branded by us. It's got a really cool little logo on it, uh, but you can see there's a pin in there. It holds all size cups. This is an eight ounce cup from Walmart that I just got, but it does hold the small cups as well. Um, you just have to, what I say and what I recommend is getting like from a Dollar Tree or Dollar Store or Walmart, that Velcro that has the sticky backing and putting a little bit around the inside of this uh, main cup. And then this will sit snugly down in there if you are mixing smaller batches. Uh, but I'm generally mix mixing batches. Uh, this is 30 mLs total. And it looks like it is about ready to go. So um, we're going to start using it. So we're going to go ahead and get this cup going. When we put the epoxy on, that rainbow will start to show. Again, we're not in natural light. We're not out in the sunlight. We're in the studio filming. So it's not going to show up as much in here as it does outside. That's why I took a little bit of video outside so you could really see that gorgeous rainbow. Uh, and then we're going to use these different inks. We have... Um, we have a uh, Ranger Intrigue. This is a pearl. Then we have uh, Villainous by Ranger. These are both pearls. So we're just going to keep shaking those up. Uh, then we've got Mer Mermaid. We've got uh, Tranquil. Uh, we've got Indigo. And then we have White. 
So we're just gonna get these all rock and roll. You always want to make sure your pearls are well stirred up. You can see the pearling on the bottom. So you can see there's a little bit of pearl left in that blue. Make sure he's stirred up good. All right, so we are going to go ahead and turn off our mixer. This has been mixing for about three minutes. So it is now ready. We just pop it right out of the little mixer. We have our cup. So you can take the pin out or just leave it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it. And we're going to start applying this down to the cup. So as we do, you're going to start seeing that rainbow really pop because it's going to get rid of that matte finish. Uh, the reason I do the matte finish clear enamel spray on top is to hold the glitter in place. Uh, we don't want it to move around. we got that beautiful halo and we want it to stay there. Um, and also the matte finish really helps the uh, epoxy grab hold real good to the top uh, coat, uh, top finish of the, of the tumbler. So the, the matte finish has a nice, good, grippy surface for this epoxy to grab onto. And it helps uh, decrease fish eyes. So I hope that helps anybody learning to just use a little bit of matte finish spray and it will get rid of your fish eyes. Okay. So now we're just going to make sure the whole cup, the entire cup has a, at least a small coat of epoxy on it. Go all the way up to the edge. We want a nice smooth surface along the edge. Now we're going to focus along the bottom. Now on this one, I left the bottom completely bare. You will see why at the end. We got a little surprise we're gonna do on there. But I am gonna go ahead right now and add epoxy. And there's a little bit left. Go ahead and just adjust a touch more down to the bottom. spot right here just kind of looking at it making sure it's got good coverage nothing's overdone all right now the silicone uh, spatula that i'm using you can get on our website it's easily cleaned i clean it with a baby wipe but if you forget and don't get it clean right away don't stress about it because you can just pop, the silicone just breaks, uh, you just crack it in the morning, you go crack, and the silicone pops right off uh, once it's cured up. So silicone and epoxy do not adhere together. Um, same thing with the little pin that's inside of there. If you buy our epoxy mixer, I just take it out and clean it with my uh, baby wipe. And it cleans right up, really easy, no problem. Okay, so we are going to drop, let's go ahead and put this under here just in case we get a drip. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to work with our alcohol inks. And I want to make sure that the alcohol inks don't work their way to the top of the cup. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lift the back of the corner up a tiny bit by putting a popsicle stick underneath it. So it angles a tiny, tiny bit down. This is the Little Ian Rose Turner. Um, it, I like the speed that it's running. Um, and then I know that just one little popsicle stick is probably going to be about perfect for this. Um, I'm going to move these alcohol inks out of my way. I'm going to torch it really quick. I want to make sure I get rid of any micro bubbles. I'm loving the rainbow I see. It's really pretty. So I'm just going to torch it just a little bit to get rid of any micro bubbles because there's no big obvious bubbles. But any little micro bubbles that are just hanging on. We're going to go ahead and get rid of those. 
in, but I don't want to overheat the uh, epoxy because we don't want it moving too much. We just want to want to pop the bubbles, but not get the epoxy too hot. Okay, so now I'm going to take my inks and I'm going to start dripping them on. In no necessarily particular way, we're just going to drop and let it run. Probably about three little drops of each one. You don't want too much ink. If you get too much ink, uh, your, your epoxy will not cure up properly. And remember, the darker colors take over really fast. I'm going to shake this and give this pearl a really good shake real quick. Okay. So far we've got Indigo, Intrigue, and Tranquil on the cup. So now we're going to use Villainous. Just a little bit. This is our purple with the pearlescence, pearlescence in it. And you notice I'm not going all the way up the cup. I'm staying at one end. Now we've got, uh, we are working with Mermaid. Of course it's Mermaid. Ooh. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it just like that. I can see that we've got a nice, good amount of coverage. So now we're going to start playing with our whites. We are, I'm okay with being able to see the sparkle through. We want to be able to see the glitter through this one. Ooh, I think I want two more drops of the dark blue. Those pearls are beautiful, but I really want to make sure that we get a good, good vibrant blue out of this one. The blue is meant to be the main color, blue and aqua. Okay, so here we go with um, our, our whites. So now what we do is we've got those on and nice and settled on. And now we're going to go and just drip with no particular care of where. We're just going to kind of plop the white. And you're going to see them just kind of transform the cup. Now, if you want these to be getting like tendrils, you can actually tip the cup down and get the epoxy to run down. And hold it just for a minute. And let it kind of mutate and then do the opposite way. And you can see the bottom, how cool the bottom's already getting. And then go the opposite way. And it becomes like a beautiful, beautiful, like a canvas, almost like a, it just kind of reminds me of just these colors, particularly with the, the Vader as the background. It's a very, very elegant, and it reminds me of Aladdin in the movie for some reason. That's why I call it Arabian Nights. Okay. 
Okay, let's see where we're at. Maybe add a little bit more white to a few spots. Get that color to really pop out. We'll go ahead and hold it down this time. All right, so what I did here is you could see I wasn't getting a lot of movement up towards the top. I was getting this beautiful movement down here at the bottom. So I drizzled a little bit of the leftover epoxy right along into this. And you, now you can see we're starting to get some of this gorgeous flow. And we're just going to let it go naturally. Oops, there's a bubble. We're going to hit it just a second. There's a bubble. Just a tiny bit of heat because this will, it looks like it has lines right now. But that's going to naturally flow as the self levels itself. And it, we just wanted to get the movement going. Um, so by adding that little bit of epoxy, just a little drizzle into there, we've got this gorgeous flow and movement. So we're just going to set it and forget it, really, um, and let this do its thing. The bottom is absolutely stunning and beautiful. I was going to do something, I was going to actually do gold leaf here on the bottom. But if it stays as gorgeous as it is, we're going to leave the bottom. Um, and I love that you are getting the peek through sparkle of the Vader still coming through this beautiful design. So I'm really, really happy with this. We're going to let it go and I'll let it keep on rocking and rolling. All right, guys, we now are at the stage where the beautiful, look how beautiful that alcohol ink came out. The bottom is absolutely stunning. I was actually going to do gold leafing on the bottom, uh, but I think I'm going to leave it because that bottom is really, really cool. Uh, so now we're going to do the part that makes uh, it this the extra little fun part of this cup. We're going to put our decals on. Um, so I chose these beautiful lanterns. Um, and the longest one is kind of pink. So he's kind of a pink foil. And I think we're going to drop that one down right here. Because we, we got a nice little pink swirl here. And I think if we drop this there, it'll accent it really, really well. So here we go. We're going to peel him down. So this is just um, permanent outdoor vinyl in foil adhesive. And we're going to drop it down, press down in the middle first, then work our way out. Just like that. Press down nice and firm so the entire image gets down, no bubbles. And then we're going to peel away gorgeous all right you know me i'm gonna go ahead and stick that down back on there so we can save that piece um now we're gonna actually do a larger two larger lanterns one is gonna go on each side um so these are gonna be real fun we're gonna do a blue foil and i'm gonna go ahead and stick that one right here so we're gonna remove this i cut these out on my cricut machine um i will have the link to the etsy shop where I bought these lanterns. They were actually very difficult to find. Um, I was very picky on what I wanted. Um, so I will have the link to the Etsy shop where I purchased this file. It's, I don't believe it was very expensive. I think it was like $2.30 or something, maybe $3 at the most. Um, they, and I said, like I said, they came out beautiful. I had to make the link chains um, on my own in design space um, to do this look, to have them like hanging from the top of the cup. But that is a very easy task to do within Design Space. So there is our number two lantern. We're going to come to this side now and add number three. 
And this one is going to be a beautiful purple. We just went with kind of all the similar colors that were already in uh, the swirl that we had going on. And we'll move this one slightly closer to the pink just to add some depth. And again, I press down in the middle first and I work my way out. That helps kind of remove the bu any bubbles. There we go. Do a nice pressing, press firm, firm, firm. Oops, see, I didn't press firm enough. Get that one rubbed down real well. We can even use our squeegee if we need to. Make sure it gets a nice seal to the cup. So I put these on foil on regular default setting and I cut them twice and they came out beautifully, very easy to weed. So if you have a Cricut machine and you need to cut these because they are a very intricate cut, um, like I said, I put it on foil uh, adhesive and I put it on default pressure and I cut it twice and it was able to cut those little details out really beautifully and made it really easy to weed. All right, so now we're gonna get this thing on. We're gonna actually clear coat this with matte finish clear coat spray because the epoxy will have a really hard time grabbing onto the really smooth surface of these uh, beautiful foil lanterns. So we are, I'm gonna actually take it and spray it with a clear matte finish and then we're gonna epoxy it. We'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm all suited up. I've got my chemical mask on. So if I'm a little hard to hear, I'm sorry. We've got our epoxy mixing. I've got my nitrile gloves on. We're going to go ahead and pull that cup right out of there. And we're going to start adding our epoxy to our beautiful Arabian Nights. You can see that those, uh, I've got a matte finish spray paint over the top of those lanterns and on the whole cup. That's going to help this epoxy grab onto those. Uh, shiny, shiny uh, finishes, really nice and easy. Uh, otherwise, it would probably leave me a bunch of fish eyes. That's kind of an important little tip on this one. Um, so make sure you use, or whenever you're using foil as your uh, decal, to make sure you cover it with a matte finish spray before you epoxy it. Uh, because especially when it's this large of a space, uh, because that is uh, really, really going to in, uh, inhibit the uh, epoxy from grabbing onto it. You guys can really see the rainbow pop out of this beautiful uh, holographic glitter. That is Vader from our holographic collection. He's gorgeous. He's a gorgeous boy. He's perfect for this because he kind of looks like the night sky. Adds that little sparkle, like little stars. And we're taking this epoxy right up to the edge. We have a nice smooth finish on that edge. Right there. So you guys can hear a lot going on in the background. My kids are in the bath. The puppy is in his crate because he does not like being in his crate when I'm out here working with epoxy. He likes to be always in my lap. <laughs> Getting a little mad. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, now we've got this gorgeous finish down. I'm going to hit it with the heat torch. We want to make sure we get all those micro bubbles out of there. Alright, put that back in the epoxy mixer. This epoxy mixer is great. This is on the, our website, littleeanrose.com. Uh, when you keep that epoxy moving, uh, it keeps it more pliable and has a longer work time. And I've got another cup I'm going to be doing, so I have enough epoxy for two. So that is going to keep it rolling. And we're going to go ahead and torch this real quick. Remember when you do the first torching on a first layer of epoxy, uh, you have to be very careful, be, uh, sorry, on this foil because the heat will wrinkle that foil up. So you have to be very, very careful when you're torching over a foil when it only has the one layer of epoxy. You don't want to get too close. You want to keep, you want to keep your distance and move very, very fast. Because if it gets too hot, it will shrivel up that foil very easily.
Now you guys have heard me say it. If you get the if you get the torch too close, it will also leave micro bubbles that actually burn the epoxy. So if you are saying I've I've got all these micro bubbles and I can't get them to pop, most likely you have probably lingered too long over one spot with your torch and like tried to work too hard in one spot and you've actually burned the epoxy. Burnt epoxy looks like a thousand little micro bubbles. Um, all right, so here we go. We're just gonna let this beautiful cup turn overnight and tomorrow we'll see if it needs another layer of epoxy. We'll see, I don't know. We'll check it out tomorrow.